Good evening, dear friends. This is Gurleen Kokhar, and I am very, very happy to have an international guest with us, Joanne Carlos Toto, a digital marketing expert from USA, Denver, Colorado. I am so very excited to host the show once again with all the viewers after one month. I'm very excited to have Joanne. Welcome, Joanne, to my episode on Deep Talks. It's a wonderful, wonderful gesture of yours to actually take out your precious time and be with us. And my viewers here are watching us both together on this platform named Deep Talks, virtual stage of love and relationships. So what does love mean to you? And why would you appreciate coming on this platform to talk about relations and love, Joanne, if I have to ask you? Well, thanks. And first of all, thanks for inviting me and having me on your show. Uh, to begin with, I think love is what everything comes from love. That's I, I think that's the origin, origin of everything. That's where everything starts. And if you don't have love in everything you do or, or feel love, if you don't have something, you cannot give it. So you got to have love to be able to give love. And, and everything you do in life, whether it's going to be in your job or your business, your relationships, uh, they got to be love. And you got to feel the love to be able to to be able to share the love with people. And that's, um, you know, we come from love. You know, that that's 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 the origin. That's where we come from. So I think the basis of everything and when we when we have a lack of love, it shows also and, and affects yeah. everybody else around us. And not only everybody else, but affects everything we do, everything we come in contact with. Wonderful, wonderful. That, that's, uh, that's amazing. Uh, you've said that it originates from within. And love is important, my dear viewers. Love begets love is what I always say. And Juan has rightly stated it. So Juan, do you think talking about bold topics is a necessity in the modern times apart from what the traditional thought process held. You know, within the people, people have a lot of inhibitions to not talk about their own relationships. Do you think it's a necessity to, you know, air such things, uh, whether it's, you know, India, whether it's America, whether it's a conservative society? Do you think people are changing, their mindsets are changing? What's your take on it? Yeah, I believe love still needs to be addressed. Uh, it seems like we, uh, we, tend to talk about love, but some, it's sometimes so superficial that it's not really a, a deep meaning and uh, a, an intention. It's, it's just only talked about love as a uh, passing subject and not something that is applied and is is lived as much as possible. And as human beings, we we have changing moods and we change our, our perceptions every day, but we got to have an idea of how to uh, be loving, how to be kind, how True. to have love as much as we can. True. That's that's so uh, that's so nicely stated by you. We need to have as much love as possible from everyone, and we need to help each other, my dear viewers. Good evening, Nilima Mahol. Thanks a lot for joining us, and I would love to state that all the viewers, please, please, please watch this episode and please pass a comment here so that I come to know and Joanne comes to know that we are connected to each other. So Joanne, uh, in your life process, can you highlight your struggles in being who you are today so the people who are watching us, uh, they know more about you. So any kind of uh, struggle that you experienced while becoming who you are today in front of the people who are watching us? Well, you know, everybody struggles, you know, one way or the other. So my struggles come from... Uh, being from an island that is part of the U.S., but it's not the U.S. So getting loved by the people here, uh, it took some time. I was in the uh, Air Force for 10 years, and I had my struggles there because when you come from an island that uh, doesn't speak the uh, English as the uh, native language, uh, you come yeah. with an accent. and You have with some different costumes that people here in the U.S. are not used to. So getting that, that reciprocal love that you you put out, uh, it's, it's been a struggle. Even today, uh, you see that people have a different mentality and uh, they don't know uh, much about Puerto Rico. So when you mention Puerto Rico, they, they don't they don't even know that we're US citizens. So it's a struggle to uh, to be part and feel part of the uh, of the mainland. Even though you know we we serve in the in the military, we we do pay taxes, we do all the other things that are required of us, and we travel back and forth. But uh, when it comes to identity. Uh, the love is is hard to come by sometimes. 
Oh, that that that's something that you struggled in your own life to be who you are today. That's that's wonderful. That's amazing. I believe uh, that is what the viewers would love to know who Juan Carlos Toto is. And I believe that the personal struggle when you share that with the viewers, they connect. They connect to a new level. And this is the profound knowledge that you are sharing with the viewers. And Harsh, a very good evening to you. Thanks a lot for stating that I am looking superb. I don't know what. What makes me look superb is something that is from within the love that is always there for the viewers there. And I always make sure that whenever I appear on this show, it's always exciting enough for the others to get attracted and connect to the host as well as the guest. So, Juen, um, love begets love. You must have heard about this. So, do you think that love should only be written in the books? and not be talked about what is your take on living a healthy relationship but how do you define a healthy relationship i mean what is your take on it well you know love is more than just a word it, the love is action you got to act to show love and in that comes from uh, communicating connecting and and be uh, be true to that to, to that person that you are and and through that to that person you're in, in, in a connection with a relationship with so it love is it's gotta be uh, acted upon every day. You gotta do something that's loving, whether it's gonna be with a friend, your your lover, your parents, uh, rel relatives. Uh, love is action. You cannot just say, "Well, I love you," and and then just be distant. Uh, it just it cannot be just <laughs> oh, words. I love that. It's gotta I, be yeah, I love that. Yeah, true. Very true. Very true. You cannot say, "My dear viewers, that I love you," and just distance. You know, there has to be a lot more that goes in. Yeah, you were continuing with something that was lovely. Can you just? Mention it to our viewers. Yeah, well, love. You get, when you have love and you say "I love you," it's gotta come from a place of really acting. You know, when when, uh, for example, if we tell our our loved ones "I love you," and then uh, in the meantime we're kind of maybe you know talking bad behind their backs or doing things that are not good, that's not love. You know, you gotta love really. Like I said, love is action. Love is a verb. It more than anything else. So you got to do the things that love requires for us to be loving, to be expressing that love. Wonderful, wonderful. So we need to be doing a lot many things, a lot many ingredients while, uh, you know, saying that I love you. So that means it's an everyday effort, my dear viewers. We need to put in that lot of efforts goes into stating and meaning that I love you. It's just not a statement, my dear viewers. So as a psychologist, I prefer stating I love you only when I really mean it. And Joanne has rightly stated it in front of the audience who's watching us. Thanks a lot, Nilima, for saying that I totally agree with Joanne Carlos Soto. He's, he's speaking something that's a reality. And we all need to accept the fact that in our society, we don't need to, you know, don the manipulative aspects in relationships when it comes to the genuine ones. So do you believe, Joanne, that there is a lot of manipulation that goes in the relationships in the personal sphere these days and it is difficult to strike a balance between your professional personal sphere? Do you really agree with me on that front? Well, I think there is a lot of manipulations. I think uh, a lot of people say, I love you uh, just to get what they want. A lot of people in business say, we love you guys just uh, without even meaning it. It's, it's become so so common for especially celebrities to say, I love you guys and I love this and love that. And it, in essence, it, it, they're only loving the attention that they're getting, but not really doing the loving thing of reciprocating and, and helping those people in a way of, you know, any way that they need or paying attention to those people. So yeah, it's it's been manipulated a lot and love, it seems like it's, it's lost some of the the power that comes behind the not only the noun but the the, the verb the action verb of loving and and actually using that that word when he really means something to you not just say i love you just because it's convenient or it's because i want to get something from you exactly so my dear viewers joanna stated that never say i love you because of expectations or expecting something from someone yeah, like I have uh, experienced over the years that I have become a little more famous. I am taking it to a level, but I think when viewers watch and say, I love you, half of them me do not mean it. I mean, so there are a lot of manipulations going on when you're rising high in life and you suddenly become a public figure. And uh, I am staying grounded, my dear viewers, with the fact 
that love is a gesture which should be shown and should be expressed but with a lot of genuineness and i totally feel that being uh, grounded is a rare quality amongst souls these days i'm a very simple soul so if i become famous or if i've connected to joanne gary michelle and many others from denver is just because there was a lot of hard work dedication and i believe that you need to put in a lot of efforts to actually be who you are today so i'm very happy to connect to you joanne and whatever you are doing is is wonderful do you believe that being a digital marketing expert it it really helps in the psychological realms of projecting the thought process of an individual do you agree with me on that score and how can a digital marketing expert be helpful to the counselors how how can you you know just give us some tips about it and what do you do and what is your take on it well, digital marketing is about communicating. Uh, you know, when you have uh, a message that you want to put out, you want to connect with that person that is on the other side. So whether you're a doctor, you're a psychologist, where you're a carpet cleaner, if you don't connect and you offer solutions to that other person, you're not going to get through. I mean, you gotta you gotta establish that relationship. Uh, any business you're in, any any profession is about building a relationship and solving a problem giving a solution to our problem and getting to that person's uh side of the of the equation and see how they're seeing things how they going through the whole process of of this challenge so marketing does that if it's done right properly that you want to connect and you want to understand what that person is going through and take in to see that if you have that solution you can offer that solution or if you know someone else that has that solution, then you can refer that person to that the other person that can offer that solution. So marketing is more than just selling things and offering things. You got to connect. You got to market the the solution instead of marketing the product. Right, right. That's so wonderfully stated by you. So uh, while uh, you are a digital marketing expert, there's a question in my mind. There are clients who cannot network properly. Is networking a part of digital marketing in a way where it becomes more effective and efficient in bringing a lot of business? Oh, networking, definitely. Uh, you can still, uh, even, even with the restrictions that we have now, whatever limited amount of networking that we have, even if it's offline or online, it's part of the whole equation. And marketing, uh, digital marketing, is just part of the whole, uh, the wheel, if you, you may, uh, it's just spoke of the wheel. You cannot uh, rely just on digital marketing and uh, oh. completely neglect offline marketing. Okay, so that that's something new that I never knew about. Like you know, yeah, that that's something that's realistic. Like it sounds like uh, a lot of knowledge in there. So your lot of experience in the fifteen years of working as a digital marketing expert is commendable, Joanne, and that's wonderful, my dear viewers. Whatever he's stating is something that's the real facts about who he is and what, what he can bring to the uh, table. So in case if you would love to connect to Joanne, please stay connected to this Deep Talks. And in the end, we will be letting you all know how to connect to him as well as to me. So uh, Joanne, does branding help in gaining an edge over uh, over other things in life? And how does it work? I have heard about branding. So is it really a great concept for the people to climb high in the business bracket what is your take on it yeah but branding branding can make uh, the difference between the top of mind marketing and not knowing who that other marketing company is so uh say for example google you know every every time you say i'm going to look up uh, something you're going to google it because that's a branding already established so when you become the go-to uh company or business in that industry then the branding means that a branding is start either, either established already or it's getting established. So people, when they start thinking about that service or product, they're going to be thinking about you. It's like Amazon, when people, at least here in the US and mostly worldwide too, they, they think about ordering products online, they think Amazon because their branding is about, you know, we, we provide pretty much everything from books to household items because that's, that's how they establish themselves, Apple. It's another big one that established themselves with electronics and computers and uh, you know the phone, iPhone. So it's it's the uh, the next level. It's 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 kind of sticking, yeah. standing out from the crowd and from the competition. That's when you are you're becoming the 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 
company in that market or industry that people want to talk about in there, they want to be trusted, they want to be, they want, it's going to be uh, higher and it's going to be called upon when, when you have a problem. Wonderful, wonderful. So um, uh, does branding also involve the content therein? Because I think the content is to be, uh, it, the content has to be important enough to be, uh, you know, at that bracket of being branded. It cannot be that branding can be with the money, uh, money only. What is your take on the people who throw a lot of money, but they don't have that content to, you know, just go up on the ladder? I mean, I have a question personally, like a lot of um, substance needs to be there to be on the number 10 or 5 or 1, you know, so that is that is what I feel about. Like you, if you, if I have to be a number one psychologist known internationally, then I have to be of that caliber to break through uh, on that bracket. What is your take on it? You know, a lot of people spend a lot of money on marketing dollars, advertising and ads and all these other paid strategies online. And the problem is that they have not established a relationship or a, a point of trust with the people who are gonna follow them. Now, there's something called trust triggers. Trust triggers are content, uh, articles, videos, testimonials, uh, write-ups in the, in the newspaper or online magazines, press releases. Th those, that, that's the thing that is even more powerful than just putting an ad online before you're, you're established. If you put that online, a lot of people don't even know who you are. They've never heard about you. So it's, it's like dating. It takes a little time before that person warms up to you. So you, you have to make sure that they start to getting to know you, start putting out articles, post images. They want to know not only the business, but they want to know who that person behind the business is. And nowadays with the, uh, the COVID and the pandemic, it seems like... Uh, there's a lot more people coming online that have, they don't have the honest uh, intent to help people. They just want their one shot, take the money and run. So that's why very it's right. so important to have it yourself. Very right, very right. That's, that's, that's an honest confession from your side during this pandemic, people do not, you know, I've seen personally that I've started the show Deep Talks basically to help people who are in distress. And I believe even Gary's wife, as we had a talk before going live, that she's a psychotherapist and she's dealing with people. And you know in America how many people have been affected by this pandemic and it's a worldwide thing which has happened. People need to be a little more kind and they have to uh, be having that kind of a gesture to help others come out openly. And uh, yes, and this, this is the way where I connect to people and I feel that this is a service to the nation. We contribute uh, our bit to the nation back. And not only the nation to India only, it is a service back to the globe. And as a responsible citizen, we are born on this earth to serve back to, you know, the society and remain eternal forever. If we are doing something good, we'll be remembered, respected, and yes, we'll be talked about. And it's not more about uh, having a fan following or something, but it's more about how you do what you want to do in a way where the passion survives your identity remains eternal that's that's what my life's aim is all about it's all about giving back with a lot of courage respect and a bold attitude to face a daring challenges and i have i have faced a daring challenge with the americans with the foreigners but as an indian yes i was respected always i was always respected irrespective of people telling me that Americans are cunning, shrewd. On this platform, I want to say they are warm-hearted souls also. So we need to break through these taboos to understand what love is. And I have found love in Americans. So three cheers to Americans because Denver has been very nice to me. And Joanne, thanks a lot for coming on my show. But there are some questions connected to the love angle and relationships. In your personal life, um, I'm sure, are you married? Let me ask first, are you married? Yes, I am. Oh, yeah, wonderful. That's that's a privilege to know that you're married. So, in your marriage, did you feel that there was a low phase where you had to pull across and you did well? And would you love to share some tips as to how to make marriage a little more balanced and progressive in the longer run for our viewers? Well, you know, one thing that I always believe is that sometimes in the moment we make things small things appear really big and we blow it out of proportions. And then years later, you think back and you say, well, that, that was kind of 
silly to you know make make such a big deal out of that. So I, I think that you gotta stop every time you have a conf conflict and look at what's really is this really something that needs to be a priority that is gonna uh, you know turn down the whole relationship or just a passing challenge that you know eventually it's gonna be forgotten. It's, it's not gonna be it's gonna be only a little blimp in the whole scheme of the relationship. So really? I think having 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 that understanding that we're not gonna just let this thing out of hand that it's just a misunderstanding it's a more, small challenge it's one thing that is going to make a big difference because years later you're going to look back and say wow that was not you know was that was not a big deal we made a big deal out of that you know another thing is you got to have a sense of humor you gotta you gotta you gotta yeah. keep laughing you gotta be silly you gotta be you know you gotta uh, make jokes you, you gotta stay light because life as it is is challenging if you let it be so you gotta take charge and say, well, you know, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be my goofy self. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have fun. I'm gonna be, I just gonna enjoy life. I'm gonna laugh. I'm gonna make the other person laugh. I, I think that you know, being uptight not only affects you, affects the other person, and affects everything else. Your business, your health, uh, your children, any relationship that you have, anything that you touch is that energy that goes flows through you into whatever it is. So you have to keep keep yourself light. Yes, exactly. And so they, they have to be a lot of a uh, lot of action in the way. Uh, I mean, uh, in the way we project and the way we act in the real relationship. I mean, people are influenced by the celebrity lifestyles and everything. You know, maintaining that kind of a rosy figure in their mind when they're getting married. So your marriage was a love marriage, or was it a what kind of marriage you had? You mean love, love marriage? Yeah, love marriage. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you have to. That's another thing. You got to step away from from the TV um, fantasy uh, marriage story that they put out. You know, life life is challenging, and it doesn't matter what we're gonna have challenges. So you got to be prepared to make a make a plan ahead of time that this challenge, this small challenge, is not gonna define the whole relationship it's not going to you know derail the whole plan that we have this is something that we can you know be able to deal with and keep moving forward because you know everybody has challenges even people that you you see perfect on tv and they seem like there's nothing wrong going on eventually you find out that you know uh, like we have some of the actors that you know you look up and you look see on tv in this big big uh figure and then months later you find out that they have cancer and they pass and you know you, you're shocked you're like wow you know so you know everybody has to challenge you we just don't know it sometimes we don't want to share it but life is life and that's part of life that's that's so rightly stated by you that you know the facts and the the living style of those celebrities people don't know like you know um i will take my personal example like people see me uh, uh, glammed up and dolled up and all and what has gone behind the scenes has been a lot of struggleful times in relations and other angles and so so it takes a lot to be who you are today but at the same time one has to be in confidence uh, in the reality angles and not live in the bubble world where you kill yourself and you are just just deflated in the end and you end up you know in the deep depression so that's why i started this deep talks because i feel that there is a need of talking about those deeper aspects of the inner self because it's like when you get up in the morning, you should be able to see your original self in the mirror. You know, it's like a talk therapy, a catharsis, a pre-talk. So this stage is all about talking about what you feel and not what your achievements are. It's it's the real Joanne who's talking about what life is and who he is and how people know who you are. So that's that's the meaning of why I started this platform. And do you really think that... Um, Mental health wellness is an important aspect to uh, deal with a lot of issues, whether it's personal, professional. Uh, how can you give our viewers some tips to, you know, approach the counselors or deal with this aspect of life? Because I feel that a role of psychologist is really important in life. So how would you let the viewers know that it's really very important? Well, mental health is, is you know, that's that's a priority. I mean, if, you, if your mind is not right, um, your body and your the rest of your your psyche is not going to be right because everything starts in the mind. So you know one of the things that you can do is meditate. Meditation calming the mind and calming the the body 
and boosts the immune system. It makes you a more uh, receptive to new ideas, more creative, more resource resourceful. So one of the things that you got to do is take care of yourself. It's like when when you're in the plane, airplane, and, and people in the uh, flight attendant tells you, make sure you put your mask on first before you take care yeah. of other people. And that's how you have to do it. You got to take care of yourself first before you can take care of your other important people in your life, before you can take care of your business, before you can take care of your friends. That's that's what you have to do. You have to put that mask on first. Relax. Take care of yourself. See see how you can get better at taking care of your mindset, at your mind uh, uh, state at that point, and then move forward. That's, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. That means... Uh, what you're stating is totally very, very true. And I feel that you have to have a knowledge about it before, you know, um, getting into this angle of taking help. Like you have to take help if you really need one. And without asking, my dear viewers, you would not arrive at a solution. Uh, am I right, Joanne? I think uh, we need to be uh, open about asking for help also. People are hesitating not to ask for help. So how would somebody be helped if someone cannot air their problems? So I think, um, do you agree with me? A lot of men have this habit of keeping things to themselves and the pressure increases, whether it's personal, professional sphere. I think there is a lot of studies and research were going on that men need to be a little more open about their issues because somewhere I think that affects them in the longer run. I do agree on that thing. I believe so. And I, I believe also that um, a lot of men are still um, getting a little more open about their mental issues, physical issues, their health challenges. Now, there's still some uh, society still have a uh, um, conflicting uh, opinion or, or uh, comments about this, because sometimes men, we want to be be able to express the challenges that we are going through. Yet, sometimes we are faced with uh, criticism from society as being not being tough enough or not being man enough or not being, uh, you know, not being ready to face the challenges. So we, as men, we are learning to deal with that and still take care of ourselves because like I said, we have to start with us before we can take care of our families. But we, we are looking at, you know, bonding more with men that are are looking at you know being more expressive and and take care of our health because for years, men's health has we as men have neglected our health, uh, and we yeah and our mental uh, state has not been talked about and uh, we don't know uh, how to talk about that how to express it and uh, uh, I've seen that even sport athletes have express mental uh, challenges and they've been made fun of. So it's, it's still a, a work in progress. But I see I see a lot of men like myself, we are seeing that, you know, it's important to keep pushing forward to make sure that men are taken care of mentally. They, they can ask for help. They can express that this is what's going on. And, you know, I got to take care of this because it's going to affect everything else, especially my family. It's my number one priority because if I don't take care of myself, you know, nobody is going to know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, that's that's so wonderfully stated by you that one has to take care about their self and not only the physical health is important, my dear viewers, the mental health is really very important. We need to prioritize. Only then can we handle the professional and the other partner as well in our life because it will be a total mismanagement if you do not take care of your mental health. So, uh, Joanne, do you think that global connections enhance the quality of life? Like, I am privileged one to actually, you know, connect to a lot many people. And, and yesterday I was asked a question by a foreigner. How do you connect to so many souls across the globe? I mean, Goodlin, you are a famous figure now. You are a star. I was like, no, boss, I think there is much to do with how you host a person, how you make others comfortable, how you deal with your life, the way you would prioritize your schedule and you would take out time for knowing others. I believe like I would love to know who Joanne is. I would love to know who Gary was and is. I would love to remain updated with people and try to build a connection and increase my knowledge because I believe learning is an ever-growing thing. Every single day you outgrow what you were yesterday. 
So do you believe that, uh, you know, connections with the global people all around, they improve the quality of lifestyle and actually I've learned a lot and being a co-author now, I think people are congratulating, Gary did congratulate me and I believe there's an inspiration coming from each, every person who walks in my life like you did today and today evening you made it special that after a month I've come back and I'm sure this bond is going to go deeper and I'm going to connect you with you for my work. And it's, it's, it's actually beautiful. So do you think global connections help in gaining a lot of knowledge across? Oh, definitely. I think that everybody should make the point of connect with people outside the world, outside the country, because, you know, we learn, we learn so much from other, other cultures that, yeah, that, you know, sometimes you're shocked not only at you know at how they live but how they think and how they you know how their 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 ancestors lived i i travel a lot when i was from the air force and i was always fascinated and i was reading about this and that civilization because i think it's so important to to get out of our little bubble and and talk to other people outside our bubble not only in business but as a community because you know it, it doesn't matter how many miles away we are from each other, but we're in this together. You know, this is, you know, the, the, the little uh, uh, mentality of being that we have, you are in the US and this is this is all there is, you know, it's very limiting and it's very, um, it can be also restricting. So making the the, uh, the point on not, ju not just visiting a country and, you know, be there for a day and taking off, I think just really going there and getting to know the culture listening to the language, get to know the people, you know, see the old buildings and see how the people live and how they think and how they interact with each other, take care of each other. I think that's when you get the full experience and you start to connect and you start feeling that, you know, you are part of the whole, not just, you're just here by yourself, um, you know, thinking about, well, you know, this is all there is because that's, that's not the case. Yeah, that, that's that's so wonderfully uh, stated by you that travel teaches a lot many things. And I believe that bookish knowledge, my dear viewers, isn't enough for growing in life. When we connect to people across the globe, we come to know that our limitations are not, not going to help us live a better life. We can come across with uh, the fears that are residing within us and we can overcome them. And yeah, initially I was a lot much nervous when Michelle told me that you have that confidence to lean to host people very well. And I proved it on American Corners. I rated number one on both of their shows, on Beata's show, Meaningful Conversations and Michelle's show. I believe that, you know, there is a terrific answer to your own self. You need to first have the confidence within yourself, my dear viewers, so that you can reach up to that level and showcase to the world what you are having, your true potential, your true challenges, with yourself, your you are your biggest enemy and you are your biggest friend is what I believe in. And yes, uh, our uh, viewer Hush has rightly stated that criticism holds men to open up on many topics. Very rightly stated, Hush. Thanks a lot for joining us. So, what is that one achievement, Joanne, in your life that has made you host the show that you are hosting on the podcast? I would say I would love to know that one achievement which speaks a lot about who you are today. Well, one of the things that probably the number one was able to uh, to join the Air Force from Puerto Rico. Um, for us that were not um, taught a English conversational English back in Puerto Rico, and to be able to join the Air Force because the Air Force. Unlike, uh, say, the Army, the Army has English uh, teaching schools. They have training for people that do not speak English. So for me to be able to uh, finish my college and, and be able to uh, pass the test to join the Air Force and be able to stay there uh, for that period of time and be able to travel the world and, and do the things that I did, I think that's, that's something I'm proud of, something that uh, I keep in mind every day. And it's something that it, it, I look back and I, you know, I look back at the, the whole journey, uh, all the things that I did and the places that I've visited. And uh, it's something that it makes me feel feel good that I can't accomplish all the things that I, you know, I set my mind to. 
That's wonderful because I think we connected because of the destined connects. I think I connected to Michelle because she belongs to defense background. I connected to you. So my father being an aviator serving the Indian Air Force, it is it is a proud moment for me to you know just host you, and it is it gives me an edge over uh, other Indians where I feel that I am knowing a lot many people across the globe, and it is a big achievement for me. I believe that now becoming a co-author with the Joseling Bellows and with the United Kingdom's John Bates Publication House. I um, I daringly challenged people uh, and the Indians and the upcoming story with a man in the uniform being stated in the story. I feel that this is a great achievement. When, when we actually are going through that process, we do not realize what we are into till we, we, till we see the fruit which comes later on. So I've never expected that I would be at this level with the Americans or with the people from different parts of the country. But yes, it's a bigger achievement for uh, putting in a lot of hard work and then coming across with uh, with colorful uh, congratulatory notes from people, you know. And I feel that uh, there are people who are there to help you out if you ask for help. And uh, yes, people like you have been kind enough to always take out their precious time and help others. So can you give us some tips for those people who are in love and romance those who are watching this show, as to how they can enhance their love life, Joanne? Well, like I said before, you got to keep a, a good sense of humor. Um, you know, keep laughing together. Uh, keep, you know, enjoying life. Uh, dancing, one, one of the things that uh, when I met my wife, she, we used to dance a lot. That, that was, uh, and we still do. That's part of something that we enjoy together. We listen to music together. So uh, you got to do a lot of things together to so, so keep that bond going. And it's like everything else. Everything that is worth something is going to require effort, uh, whether it's going to be a relationship, going to be a business, uh, a friendship. Anything that is worth something is going to take some effort on your part. So and I think uh, having a, a good sense of humor is one of the easiest things you can do. Uh, work out together, have you know fitness uh, mentality and just do some basic, maybe even walking or doing some things in the outdoors that you both enjoy. Uh, you know, it, it takes it takes the whole a person uh, mentality to be able to keep a relationship going. It's not just uh, uh, because otherwise everything becomes a routine. So you got to share different things together, different interests, and and make sure that also uh, when you are in a jam, they you got to communicate that also. You got to make sure that that person knows that, you know, I need I need a, a second set of eyes to look at this thing or maybe an opinion. And it doesn't mean that you have to, to accept that opinion, but there might be a way for you to open up and your mind to open up to different options, to different ideas, different resources that you have that you're not seeing at the moment. Very, very right. I mean, they, they, they are the highlighted points by Juwen, my dear viewers, and you can gain an insight into what he's talking of, because that is something that I keep talking about, that the monotony should be broken. And there has to be a lot of creative angles to your relationship. And you need to keep the fire on. You need to keep the passion on in a relationship, whether it's for five years, 10 years, 15 years down the lane, you need to communicate with your partner and make it happening. So do you think taboos in relationships should die a natural death? Because I believe uh, having those taboos and those stereotypes in the mind are actually harming the true potential to be out. What is your take on it? I think the taboos should die a natural death and there should be a revolutionary movement of sorts where people actually feel more comfortable in sharing their experiences and knowledge like I am doing. So what is your take on it? Well, it depends on what those taboos are. I think that uh, you know we gotta we gotta uh, examine and uh, investigate each one individually and see what uh, w you know what those taboos are. Because sometimes are there are some things that really kind of you know keep us moving forward, and you, we definitely have to let let go of those. Uh, there are some things that are that are taboos because somebody else uh, decided to make it a taboo. And, uh, you know, and then it spread. It's, it became like a rumor and then became somebody's opinion and it became a belief. And some of the yes. things, they have to be evolved into, uh, they have to see the light of the truth. It has to be yeah. exposed to the truth and they have to be examined. And if, if they're not healthy, they're not safe, they're not good, they need to be let go, definitely. 
Oh, wonderful. That's that's amazing because I totally feel that there are some taboos regarding uh, talking about sexuality, sensuality and all that stuff. You know, when I was uh, daringly challenged by Michelle, if she, she sees this episode, she would be knowing that in America, she stated people still are conservative and reserved. They watch everything, but they don't air and talk about it openly. But then I took the challenge and, you know, I won the challenge. And when a lot of many viewers, maybe 2000, 700 people who watched her show. Um, it was something that that took me out with the fact that sometimes you need to take that extra initiative. Uh, and I took that as an Indian to be across the globe talking about all those taboos which people don't talk about, whether it was divorce, sex, sensuality, lust, cravings and desires. So I think it was a wonderful journey to be there on other shows. And I hope that I'm called on your show as well because you're doing really well. So... Uh, so, Joanne, I mean, you are hosting people who are uh, with the business, uh, uh, only the business lot on your show. So as, as a radio host, uh, how would you describe your journey? I mean, what exactly made you hit on starting your own podcast? My podcast is uh, has a mission. My mission is to help uh, small business owners, professionals uh, to have more visibility to have uh, a, a face out there, uh, have a, a platform that sh showcases what they do and how they help their clients. Uh, it's not a, a two, three minute show. It's, it's sometimes 30, 40 minutes because I want my listeners to to learn and, and get to know that person, get to know the stories, get to know what kind of uh, solutions that person provides to their clients. So my my, my mission is to help small business owners create that visibility and credibility and the trust. And my vision is, is, is that I will have a lot of them eventually having having said that, you know, I was on, on JC's podcast and people saw me and I was able to, you know, able to get a speaking gig somewhere, speak in front of a crowd or, or get my book out or or have more clients. So that's my vision. But my mission is to have those people come and talk to me. Let's let's have a conversation. Tell me who you are. What what do you do for your clients? How do you help them out? What are the fears that your clients bring to you that that usually uh, they don't tell anybody else, but they're there and they need to to start working through those fears to get to the other side of what they want to accomplish. So that's wonderful. So that means uh, basically you're dealing with uh, conquering the fears as well, and that 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 is. That is great. That's a great mission and there's a great vision behind it. So uh, basically, that was a turning point that made you start the JC radio show, uh, that podcast, right? So do you think yeah. that podcast really helps people in gaining an edge over other platforms? I believe the podcast help. Uh, however, the, the, uh, the challenge or what I see that a lot of people do is that they do a podcast and it stops there. A podcast, just like everything else, you got to promote it. You got to let people know it's there. You got to put it on your website. You got to email people. You got to put it on Facebook. You got to put it on LinkedIn. You got to make sure that people know about your podcast interview. They hear about it. And then you got to have a plan that once that momentum dies uh, temporarily, then how do you, you make it uh, relevant again in a couple of months and maybe a year from now? So it's, it's a whole strategy that it, it cannot be just one and done. You got to take that, that content and you got to repurpose that content. You got to take that content and turn it into something else that's going to help you out. And I see people that, you know, they just have an interview and, uh, you know, I usually send them a, uh, an image so they can use it on Facebook and LinkedIn. And they, sometimes they don't even take the time to use that image to promote themselves. So the podcast, sometimes they don't do a lot for them because, you know, it's, it's not even promoted. Only I promote it and I send it to my list and I put it on Facebook. But, uh, you know, it, it will be more exponentially powerful if that person and the person that they know and they know and they know, they start spreading the word. They start sharing that that podcast with everybody else. Yeah, wonderful, because I have been invited by Suzanne Kathleen from America, I believe. Uh, so, no, for, uh, yeah, she, I think so. I, I am forgetting from where she's belonging. But her podcast is ranking number 23, and she wants me on her podcast, you know, in the world. It's ranking number 23. So maybe she, there must be something that she must have done, like, you know, 
it's like a burning fire i believe that you have to spread it you have to keep uh, igniting the mission with a vision that every single day it has to spread to many many people and the people who are coming on the podcast also needs to be of that that level that they are interested in you know uh, making it happen so starting a podcast and maintaining a podcast to a level is a different ball game altogether uh, are you agreeing with me on that note yes it, it is uh, it takes like i said earlier that anything that is worth doing is going to take effort and if if you just have a podcast and you just have the interviews and uh, you, nobody knows about it it's like we we say uh, uh, before it's like winking in the dark you're winking but you're the only one that knows you're winking but nobody else knows it so you got to you got to shine the light on that podcast guest on that show if you're the one doing the show uh, yourself and, and and sharing your knowledge you got to let people know that you are sharing that knowledge you got to take that content and repurpose that content and getting uh, that content out there in different ways so people you got to stay top of mind and people know that you're and that that's what also comes with the part of branding that you asked me earlier that's part that's part yeah. of branding you got to let people know you're there yeah so that's that's wonderful so i think my coming on three international podcasts where people have invited me would be a great opportunity for me to be uh, out there with public and my life would be on air and and it is a fantastic experience to actually host people from across the globe and be there invited by them it's wonderful it's an amazing experience and uh, uh, may i know how people can connect to you i you have shared a uh, a website onlinemedia360.com so my dear viewers who are watching us you can connect to Juan Carlos Toto from the website he has mentioned it's on their screen online media360.com am i right juan is this is the same thing yeah they can contact me uh if they want to email me at jc@onlinemedia360.com at they can send me an email um on facebook also uh um, on okay. linkedin so i'm 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 online quite a bit so yes oh wonderful wonderful so my dear viewers in case if you are unable to get to him you can always fall back to me uh, gurleen koker at gmail.com right there up on the screen and online media 360.com to connect to juan so a uh, last message for the host who's going to become a co-author juan it was wonderful hosting you and i wish to uh, state that a friendship across the globe has actually uh taught me a lot today and today evening it's more special because after a month i'm holding this show and i believe that this momentum has to go on and many more souls will come on this love seat and share a lot much than only manipulation so last message for the host and the viewers well i wish you continued success uh this show um i'm glad you're doing this uh please keep keep it going don't let it stop and uh you know to our viewers and for our viewers uh you know just keep a good sense of humor stay connected and uh really really be kind and, and loving to each other to other people uh and number one, take care of yourself if you don't take care of yourself you cannot take care of anything else your health our health is number one and mental health is number one our physical health is number one we got to take care of, of that before we can share and take care of our loved ones true that's that's wonderful that's wonderful uh, statement by juan take care of yourself so my dear viewers this was deep talks virtual stage of love and relationships i was wonderful hosting juan carlos toto so stay connected and stay smiling take care of yourself in this festive season do not burst crackers take care of the fact that the environmental pollution is going hi so we need to take care of the environment and that is the reason why this pandemic happened take care of the animals around you and take care of your own self remain in pink of health and this is gurleen poker your host your lovable those signing off for another episode stay tuned god bless you